Welcome. In front of me is an LG K52, and today I'll show you a couple tweaks and tricks you can do on this device. Now, starting off, we're going to begin with the probably most common one, uh, at least that I use, which is the gesture navigation. And uh, this is primarily for the people that might not want to use them because I believe, if I remember correctly, the device comes with gesture navigations actually enabled. And if you want to change it back to the buttons, uh, as you can see right now, you are free to do so by going under the display. And then right at the top you will have navigation bar. And from here you can change it to gestures or buttons only. Now personally I prefer gestures uh, for like my personal use, but when I'm recording things like, for instance, I am doing right now, uh, buttons are a little bit better to navigate uh, so I don't have to actually try to swipe, especially when the device is on a stand, that is super hard to do. So buttons at that point are a little bit of a saver. But still, you are free to change it to gestures if you want to, which, like I said, I personally uh, prefer over the buttons. So moving on to the next one, it's gonna be the app drawer. And by default, the device comes with, well, as you can see, all the apps smack in the middle of your home screen, uh, like it's pretending to be an Apple device, which I just despise. So we can make it back again into an actual Android device with an app drawer. And again, the setting is under the display. From here, you will go under to the home screen and then select home, where you will have the home and app drawer option. So check that on, apply. And there we go. And the apps are now gone and you can pull up from the bottom, your app drawer, where you will have all your apps neatly stored in alphabetical order, which to me is a little bit more organized and I can make the home screen a little bit cleaner by removing all the clutter from it and unwanted trash. And yeah, that is just kind of how I prefer it. Now, if you prefer to have all your apps smack in the middle and just create folders to store them, again, you're completely free to do so. It's just kind of what I feel like uh, is a little bit better. Now moving on to the more convenient uh, stuff, it's going to be the app drawer, or what am I saying, app drawer, the split screen, and you can access it fairly easily if you open up an app. Now I'm going to use YouTube if I can actually find it. There we go. So whatever app you want to open up first, or at the top of the split screen, you will open up first. From there you want to go to recent. As you can see, there's the YouTube and you have uh, the icon right about above here. So you want to hold it. This will bring up this mini, as you can see. And from here, you have the multi-window. Now it's called here a multi-window for some reason. So as you can see right now, YouTube is open right here. And you are still in recent where you can choose uh, any kind of app that is open and accessible in split screen. So I could open up settings if I wanted to or majority of the other applications, uh, for instance, like Chrome, if I wanted to. And by doing so, I can then basically watch YouTube videos while browsing the web or just doing whatever I want on my phone without actually being forced to have YouTube uh, take well, priority. Um, also, if you go home and as you can see, YouTube minimizes like this, it will continue to play the video. It will not pause it. Uh, the only time it will pause is if you close it by just completely swiping it up, or if you lock the device, uh, which is, well, kind of a normal thing. So I'm just gonna move it away. And then moving straight to the other option, uh, which you could probably see in there as well, which was the pop-up view. So again, let's hold this and you will see the, uh, and here it's called pop-up window. I got to keep it different. Uh, but as you can see, it will open up a window of it which you can move it around you can also resize it if you want to to make it super small and again it is fully interactable you could use it normally as basically any other application um, and again you can move it out of the way basically uh, which will take less space than the split screen and again you can open up other apps and now the benefit of having it in this mode is i believe if you open up yep Oh no, never mind. The camera still closes it, I think. Or not, never mind. Uh, so, 
So normal circumstances uh, in split screen, if you launch a camera, uh, a camera will close out split screen. So there are certain apps that will just exit it out. Uh, camera is one of them. But if you open it up in pop-up view, as you can see, you can still have it open and it will work just fine. Now, the thing is, I believe if I try to go home, it will close this into an app head, which will pause the video and also will close the camera. And to bypass the closing of uh, video, what you want to do, I believe, is go back. We'll make sure. It looks like camera just overally minimizes it, which is really annoying. But yeah, as you can see, if you go home, it does the same thing. So if you want to bypass uh, closing of the application in pop-up view, you want to basically swipe back instead of uh, instead of going home. So let's just get rid of this for now. There we go. And then moving on to the last option I wanted to show, it's going to be the animation speed. Now by default, there is some kind of uh, believe animation settings but they are never good from my experience and to get the good animation speed options what you want to do is enable the developer options which you can find by going straight down to system from here you're gonna go to about phone and then software info where you'll find build number you want to tap on that seven times as you can see when I start tapping it gives me a pop-up no need you're uh, you are already a developer which will not allow me to enable it again because it's already enabled. But for you, once you tap on it seven times, it will pop up a message after the seventh tap uh, that you have just enabled the developer options. And from there, you can go back, go back once more into, into the system. And you should see the option right here, the developer options. So tap on it, scroll down to a little bit past halfway, and you will see these three options right here. So we have the transition animation scale, window animation scale, and animation duration scale. Now each one of them will correspond to a different kind of animation. I believe on the newer LG systems, it actually does it a little bit better in terms of showing you. It's like animated and it has its own uh, section under the display and it gets completely removed from developer options. Uh, but that is, I believe on Android 10 and not on this one, or maybe even further. I believe the uh, LG Wing is the one that comes with it. But anyway, you can tap on the window animation skill and this will correspond to things like this window that just popped up right here. And just to show a bit of a difference, I'm just gonna make it times 10, which will uh, basically make it super long. So now if I tap on it, you can see it just kind of does this super slow uh, animation. And as you've seen, by default, it's set to one. So if you want to make it faster, get rid of the animations quicker, uh, you can set it to 0.5. And this will basically reduce the animation by half, making it twice as fast. And this will, in my opinion, increase your well, app accessibility, I would say, uh, drastically. So your apps will basically close open faster uh, the animation is basically shorter right now and making you access apps quicker. Now, if you want to go a little bit overboard, you could also turn them off completely if you wanted to. Where was it? Right here. There we go. So you could turn off the animation, although I wouldn't really recommend it. Um, this will make certain uh, parts of the device look a little bit wonky when it just kind of glitches out applications. So let's see, as you can see, some of them just kind of look weird. For instance, when you go home, it is animated as long as you're sliding, right? As you can see, this is in a way animated, but the moment I kind of let it go like this, you can see, it just kind of snaps into position, which is a little bit weird, I would say. And this will basically go around to a lot of different aspects. Now in certain cases like this one where there is no animation, you just kind of snap back or whatever. It is completely fine to me. I do like it. And it still won't remove every animation as you can see, but it is an improvement uh, over the, for instance, half, uh, half animation. Uh, still, personally, I prefer to have it set to 0.5, which will increase the animation, but still keep them. Uh, uh, but off is still an option if you want to just literally get rid of any kind of uh, slowdowns if 
if I can call it that way. But that being said, this would conclude all the tweaks and tricks I wanted to share. And if you found this video helpful, don't forget to hit like, subscribe, and thanks for watching.